Hi, Facebook friends. I'm Delia Gallagher with CNN here at the Vatican, where we've just had an incredible morning when Mother Teresa became Saint Teresa of Calcutta. It is a traditional ceremony that has happened for centuries here at the Vatican, but Pope Francis this time was the one to stand on the altar, utter the words in Latin that officially declare her a saint. Now, I know many of you are thinking, well, I thought she was already a saint because many people knew about the works of Mother Teresa throughout her lifetime. But the Vatican has its own official way of investigating sainthood. It's usually a long process, but for Mother Teresa, it took only about 20 years. They sped it up because John Paul II, who was a great friend of hers, said he wanted to put her on the fast track to sainthood. And that fast track culminated today in the ceremony, which has just wrapped up. You can see some of the people are leaving and they're cleaning up. The Pope is actually inside with about 1,500 uh, of the poor and homeless from around Rome, some of them from Mother Teresa's houses here, having a pizza party. He decided that he was going to offer pizza to about 1,500 homeless people. So they're having lunch as we speak. So you're asking me, what is the atmosphere like? Well, it was a great morning, very festive. There were about 120,000 people here. That's not a huge crowd for the Vatican, but they were from all over. We saw flags from India, of course, where Mother Teresa uh, did most of her life's work, from Albania, where she was from, of course, from Brazil, from France, from all countries around the world, because everybody loved Mother Teresa. She wasn't just India's nun. She was a nun for everybody. It's very hot here, but they waited out under the sun throughout the early hours of the morning until the ceremony began. And they had a great time when Pope Francis came down in his Pope Mobile, a special treat for them. Of course, they come for Mother Teresa, but they also come for Pope Francis. And he was able to go through the crowds in his Pope Mobile and say hi to everyone. They got a good glimpse of him and were able to take a few photos. A lot of people did travel to Rome for this moment, as I said, not as many as might be expected. She was beatified, that's the first step to canonization, in 2003, and there were a lot more people here for that occasion. Could be questions of security concerns, could be questions of it's already end of summer, a number of other things that may have kept some people away, but certainly the crowds here were enthusiastic in their love for this woman. We also know, for example, in Calcutta, there were probably 10 times more people celebrating as well for her there. A lot of people from India, we saw Mother Teresa's nuns. You know, it's really interesting to see that Catholic nuns wearing the Indian sari. And that's something that Mother Teresa herself sort of invented because she was a Catholic nun before she founded her missionary order. And she was a Loretto nun, so she wore a regular nun's habit. And then she heard Jesus telling her that she should go and work and found this order with the poorest of the poor in Calcutta. So she put on a sari to be like the Indians. And that's why her missionary sisters wear those saris with the little blue lining. What do you have to do to be declared a saint? And are there any rules, you're asking? Well, it's actually very difficult. I mean, it's a process at the Vatican that they take very seriously. You know, in the old days, saints have been around, obviously, since the beginning of the church. And they were generally people who were martyred, who were killed for their faith. And the people that knew them said this was a saintly person. They died uh, for their faith. But nowadays, what the Vatican has instituted is a whole procedure investigating their life investigating what they did, looking at everything they ever wrote, whoever they knew. And in fact, one of the interesting things to come out of the investigation of Mother Teresa's life was that she actually had what they call this dark night of the soul. She had this interior suffering for many years throughout her life that nobody knew about. She wrote about it to her spiritual director, but it was a secret throughout her lifetime. It came out after her death that even though she was walking around, smiling, helping the poor, she, felt, she said she felt abandoned by God. She said she felt she had lost her faith. So that's something nobody really expected from this woman who is now a saint. Adds a kind of extra element to uh, the idea of a saint who is actually suffering along with the people that she is helping. Let's take a look at some of the other questions that you're sending in. What did the Pope have to say about Mother Teresa today? Well, you can imagine that Pope Francis, obviously his whole pontificate is dedicated towards service for the poor. So Mother Teresa's life embodied that in a special way for Pope Francis. Now, it's interesting that Pope Francis 
didn't really know Mother Teresa. He said he saw her from afar at a gathering of bishops, and he watched her kind of interacting with the bishops, and he said she had this way about her, a kind of stern way, even though she was this tiny little woman. And he said, he jokingly said, you know, I wouldn't like her to be my superior. But he didn't have a close relationship with her in the way that John Paul II did. I mean, those two were really friends. And John Paul II was one of the people who really, I think, brought Mother Teresa to the fore. He was the one, as I said, who fast-tracked her canonization. Usually these things take years. But he was really convinced of the validity of her work, of the sanctity of her life. And so he put her on what they say the fast track because that means that normally at the Vatican they wait five years after the death of somebody in order to begin the process of looking into their life, looking at all the people they knew, and finding the miracles. In the case of Mother Teresa, she died in 1997, and John Paul II said, I want this to start right now. People know that she was a saint. They're already calling her a saint. Let's start the investigation now. It took about 20 years, but that's a short period of time uh, in Vatican terms, and the culmination of that was this event today. Tommy asks, why can't the Pope just make someone a saint instantly? And that's a really good question, Tommy, because that is actually the way it used to happen. It wasn't the Pope, it was the people. So the people knew this person, and they said, this person has lived a saintly life. For us, this person is a saint in heaven after they died. And so it was the people who proclaimed the saint. And that happened throughout the first centuries of Christianity. Then what happened is the Vatican said in about the 15th century, wait a minute, we don't want to have charlatan saints. We need to verify that these things really did occur. These miracles, for example, because a lot of people claim, oh, I received a miracle from a saint. So the Vatican instituted this investigation in order to kind of make it official. But actually, sainthood in its origins was something that the people just proclaimed. And if you remember, when John Paul II died, there were those signs saying, Santo Subito, saint immediately. And that was also the people who were speaking. And the Vatican listens to that because they say it's the people who uh, want to have these saints. It's the people who like to pray to these saints. So we're going to listen to them first uh, before starting these causes. What were the nuns in the square feeling today, and was it emotional? Well, I talked to the uh, superior of the Missionaries of Charity. Her name is Mother Prima. She was here, and she said it's a wonderful moment for all of them. Of course, they really emphasized that Mother Teresa probably wouldn't have liked all of the hoopla because she was somebody that even during her lifetime, she had loads of publicity and she tended to complain a little bit about it. She said it was like a cross, a kind of suffering that every time she went anywhere, there were cameras and lights and people that wanted to meet her because she felt that her work was just to be with the person in front of her. That was her mission. It was to be with the dying and be with the suffering. It wasn't necessarily about giving them medicine or food. She said it was about giving them spiritual assistance, about giving them love, making them feel wanted. She said feeling unwanted, unloved, and uncared for is the greatest poverty of our time. So she felt her mission was to be with them, and of course, with all of the kind of media attention that she garnered, it became more and more difficult for her to actually carry out that mission. So she lived that as a kind of cross. So she herself may not have been so enthusiastic about having big ceremonies, but she accepted it anyway. Let's see what else we've got. What is she most famous for? Well, I think most people know her as the nun who helped the poor in the slums. That's kind of the general idea of Mother Teresa. But there's an interesting story to the whole beginning of that because in the beginning she was a nun, a regular nun, and she had to leave that order in order to go out into the slums and work with the poor. That was the calling that she felt she had from Jesus. But in order to leave, she had to request permission from Rome. And they didn't like that idea. They said, what do you want to leave uh, the order that you're already in? You're protected. You're in this convent. You're teaching at a school. What do you mean you want to go live? She called it the darkest holes of the poor. What are you talking about? You can't just go out there by yourself. And she insisted, and it's very interesting to read her letters because she is very, very determined. And she continually writes to her archbishop and she writes to the Pope. And she is waiting for an answer to be released from those vows and to be able to go out and found this order. As I said, she just, when she finally got the permission, which she did get after some time, they made her wait quite a long time, 
and she put on this sari and she just went straight out into the into the slums of Calcutta and just started with one home there. So she didn't have necessarily this grand plan that she was going to establish houses all around the world. She just wanted to do this one thing. And she brought another nun with her and then others started to come. And of course, we know the rest is history. So thanks for joining us. It's been a wonderful day here. As I said, the Pope is inside enjoying his pizza as a kind of nice gesture uh, for this great theme of reaching out to the poor, something that Mother Teresa, now St. Teresa's life, embodied. I'm Julia Gallagher at the Vatican. Thanks for joining us.